Hi everyone, welcome to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey. Jim and Java is designed to answer your fundraising questions. So let's jump right into our questions this week. Our first question this week is from Chris in Orlando, Florida. Chris asks, how do I determine how much to ask someone to give on an appointment? Well, Chris, that's a great question and I get it very often. Um, research is the key to any good fundraising effort and especially if you're going in to meet with a current or prospective major donor. The good part about meeting with a current donor is that they've already given you some indication of how they like to give and how much they like to give based on their past giving. Now you can you, there are a number of factors that you can't always know, such as what is the current state of their business, their current health situation, uh, situation with family, all those kinds of things are so very, very important for you to know and it's hard for you to, to factor in in this process. So those, those kinds of things need to be looked at and the questions need to go before uh, our partners. And so I would always start with either the amount that they've given in the past, say that they gave a gift of $1,000 last year, you could say, would you be interested in a gift of $1,000, $2,500, or $5,000? Or you could say, would you be willing to give a gift of $750, $1,000, So in the first situation, the largest gift they've given was at the beginning. In the second situation, the largest gift or their last gift was in the middle. So at least with current donors, you've got some kind of a guideline as to where to go. Now, if you're meeting with someone who has never given to your organization, chances are they have given to some other organization. And this sometimes um, is alarming for some people, but it's, all, it's important to know that almost any of our giving information is out there on the internet somehow. We all have to fill out IRS income tax forms, um, our, our, if we're part of a major corporation or we have to sell stock, all those kinds of things are in there and in, that doc, in, in those materials. So it's important to do your research. And of course, if that person was given, their name was given by someone that you know, uh, it, it, chances are people associate with individuals of the same socioeconomic status. So it's important that if Fred Jones was an attorney and gave you the name of someone else in their law firm, chances are they're probably getting a similar amount of money as the, the, law, the lawyer that you knew. So it's important to go back. And uh, now that isn't always the case, but many times it is. So uh, Chris, I hope that helps you uh, get some kind of an indication of how much you should ask on an appointment. All right, our second question comes from Joe in New Jersey. Joe asks, what are the first things to do as a development office of one? Wow, Joe, I'll tell you, that is always very challenging being a uh, single development person because there are so many responsibilities related to development. Uh, the primary responsibilities are always going to be building and cultivating relationships of current donors, especially current major donors. But there's also a lot of administrative kind of duties that are that need to be done. And you really need to weigh what are the most important things for any development officer to be doing? Now, if going to get going to meet and and cultivating relationship is with major donors is important and probably the primary thing that should be done, it's we've got to also look at if you're doing other kinds of activities, is there someone that you could bring on that would actually save you time? and ultimately save you money and maybe even make you more money as a result of bringing that person on. So in other words, if you're typing your own letters, if you are scheduling your own appointments with major donors, and if you are having to 
work in other areas such as negotiating contracts, uh, doing site visits with hotels, making sure that reports are done on a weekly, monthly, annual basis for your financial department and of course uh, any financial reporting that you have for your audits or anything related to that. Um, you've got to really look at those and say, is that the best use of my time? If, you, if the best use of your time is being in front of a major donor, asking them to partner with you financially, then look at the other things that you're doing that are taking away from that. Uh, and even look at, is it best that you're sitting in a particular meeting rather than being out to lunch with a major donor. If you are sitting in a particular staff meeting or some kind of a meeting over lunch and you are not going to lunch with a major donor, I think you should really look and say, do I need to be in that meeting or is this a meeting that I could be skipping? So the bottom line question is, is there someone that could be brought on, an administrative person that could be brought on to help maximize your time as a development person? So I hope that helps answer your question, Joe. Uh, it's a good one because single uh, organization, uh, an organization of one or a development department of one, uh, it's so similar in the kinds of things that you're going to be asked to do and that you're demanded to do. So anyway, I hope that helps, Joe. Uh, that concludes this episode of Jim and Java. Again, if you have questions that you'd like for me to answer, uh, if you prefer Twitter, go out to at devfstrats and use the hashtag in Jim and Java. If email is a preference for you, just go out to developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as I always say, I wish you the best as you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.